Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lab of EC573 Advanced Embedded Logic Design. In this lab, we are going to discuss about the scatter gathered mode of the DM. In the previous lab, we focused on the simple mode of the DM where you can transfer the contiguous set of data from one memory location to the IP or some other memory location. So first we will understand what is the difference between the simple and the static gathered mode. So let's start with the discussion on the uh, simple mode of the DMA. So in the simple mode of the DMA, suppose this is your uh, Zinc SOC IP. Uh, you have, say this is the PS part, this is the PL part, and we are using the AXI DMA which converts the memory map to the stream interface. And this is our IP with the stream interface where we receive the data and send the process data back. And this is our say memory. It can be internal or external memory. Uh, we'll use the common uh, feature. And the DMA receives the data from this one and writes the data back to this one. So we call this as a uh, memory map to stream and this one as a stream to memory map. Then in case of the simple memory, suppose that your data is present at this address. Then you have this as a start address. Then this is the length of the data to be transferred. And using the simple transfer, you tell, you configure the DMA. Okay, PS configures the DMA via AXI uh, light port by writing inside the register. So there are registers inside the DMA and you write the start address, you write the length, and you start the DMA by setting the uh, run stop bit as equal to one and the DMA will read the data and uh, send the data uh, to the IP via MM2S configuration and another simple transfer where the DMA will read the data from the IP and write the data back to the memory, maybe say some uh, at this location where this is your uh, destination address using the H2M. So this is what we did for the simple DM. Now, suppose that the my data is not in the contiguous memory. So here you can see that the data is in the contiguous memory, all the contiguous one. And the output data is also need to be written in the contiguous memory. But this may not be true in all the applications. So what happens when the data is in the non-contiguous memory, that is the data is scattered in the multiple uh, location. In that case, we cannot use the simple DMA or we need to uh, use the simple DMA for every contiguous um, bunch of data, which may not be an efficient one. Sometimes we have the large chunk, uh, we want to perform, we want to send the large number of packets. Packets means a one set of data. For example, in simple transfer, you can say that you are doing the one packet processing. And we want to do the multiple packet processing. Do you, then in case of the simple DMA, you have to configure the DMA via AXI light proce uh, process for every packet, uh, uh, which means the CPU will be keep will be busy uh, for uh, in configuring the DMA if the number of packets are more. So can we automate this process? So the scatter gathered mode is the, uh, uh, as the name suggests, it can collect the data from the multiple uh, uh, sources, non-continuous data, and it can handle the uh, writing and the reading of the non-continuous data. So to discuss the concept, so let's look at this concept again. So this is the, my uh, Zinc SOC, uh, this is my PS. I'll say that this is my two memory here. I'll say that this is my data memory and say that I have this uh, one bunch of data. Then I have this another bunch of data, okay? And I uh, say multiple such bunch of data are there. So this is my third bunch of data, okay? And I want to uh, store the data. Okay, so I'll just increase the size something like this. And I want to store the data here after the data is processed by the IP in the non contiguous location. So, like this. And then what I want is that uh, this is my DMA and this is my IP. 
it's uh, the interface remains the same. What I want is that DMA should read this data first, send it to the IP or the MM to S interface, and then DMA should read this second data, this third data, and the the data the process version of this data DMA should store it here or the, or using the S to MM uh, transfer. So this similarly this is second and the third process data version of this uh, uh, MM2S data. So I want the DMA to process multiple packets. And uh, in that case, I don't want to configure the DMAs every time for every simple transfer because these are the six simple transfer. So I need to configure the DMA six times AXILI transfer and it will be very time consuming. So what I want to do is that I will use the another set of memory where I'll uh, use the uh, descriptors. So this is called as a uh, descriptors. Some people also call as a uh, buffer descriptors. Uh, you can see that this is the buffer descriptor BD. And in that BD, I'll explain the what is the starting address, what is the length of the data, and so on. And I'll write, say, the corresponding BDs, I'll write it here. And then I'll, uh, for uh, this, using the processor, I'll just tell the DMA that uh, the BDs are stored at this location. You read the BDs, the information about the transfer is there in the BD and perform the transfer as per the information. And then once the transfer is done, then uh, uh, let me know that the CPU will uh, get the information either via polling or via input. So in this case, now CPU doesn't need to configure the DMA for every transfer. CPU just tell the DMA that Okay, the descriptor I have already prepared in this memory. Go read and fetch the descriptor and then decide, uh, then perform the corresponding transfer, uh, which is mentioned, which is described by the descriptor. So in this case, you can see that the, uh, the DMA is able to gather the data from the multiple uh, non contiguous memory. Uh, the CPU doesn't, CPU management has become easy because CPU just need to tell the DMA that, okay, here are the descriptor, start processing. So this is there. The CPU task has been reduced. So the, the, this, these are the, uh, uh, and this is quite useful when you want to transfer large chunks of uh, packets, non contiguous data, then a simple transfer is not efficient. You have to go for the scatter gather. Okay. So the scatter gather allows the application to define a list of transactions in a memory, which the hardware will process without application interval. So the CPU will just tell the DMA that, okay, these are the descriptors, just perform this descriptor will involve the multiple memory transfer, perform those things, I don't need to intervene further. So that means your DMA management work, like in the simple DMA for every transfer, you need to use the simple transfer function has been significantly reduced because now this DMA management work has been reduced from the CPU. Uh, CPU just need to create the buffer transfer and give the address of the buffer transfer to the DMA, and then the DMA will take care of the rest of the transaction. So to read this buffer transfer, you will see that there is an additional memory map port has been added on the DMA, and this memory map port should be connected to the memory where you are going to store the buffer transfer uh, descriptor, BD. Now this BD descriptor, you can store it in the block RAM, you can store it in the URAM, or you can store it in the open chip memory, or you can store it in the DDI, any memory you can use. Then uh, the, from the application point of view, application will keep on updating this buffer descriptor to give the additional work to the DM. You can have the, uh, you can, uh, once the, D, you can have the different state of the buffer descriptor, like buffer descriptor are under process or the completion. So after completion, application can update the, with, uh, the buffer descriptor with a new information for a new transfer. So application just need to update the buffer descriptor. DMA will keep on doing the task after it completes the ongoing task. Uh, BDs can be located anywhere and you can have the cyclic uh, operation. Suppose that you define the uh, BD with say that, uh, suppose that this is your BD memory and you define the uh, BDs with the, this is the BD for the first transaction. Uh, this is the BD for the second transaction. Uh, this is the BD for the third transaction. And this is the BD for the fourth transaction. Now, suppose that this BD is, uh, uh, now 
after completing this last body then you can have the enable the cyclic operation so that the, this dma will go back to the first bd and start fetching the next set of transaction so by the time the dma is doing this transaction or this transaction or this transaction your application may update this buffer descriptor with the new set of transfer by the time the process then the uh, application process may uh, uh, process, uh, application may update the other bds in the particular fashion so that the uh, you can keep the dma free uh, busy uh, doing the corresponding transaction this is usually also important in the packet based processing you know, where you can have the one packet which is distributed over the multiple non contiguous data and by using the start of frame and end of frame you can uh, do the packet based processing so the packet is defined as a series of data that represents a message uh, scatter gather dma allows uh, the packet of data to be broken up into the one or more transaction for example this is quite practically uh, useful in case of the ethernet your packet consists of the a large number of uh, data where it includes the header in the beginning and then the few bytes of payload now you with the sg dma the application may point a buffer descriptor to the header one buffer buffer descriptor for the header and another buffer descriptor for the payload and then transfer them as a single message now you don't need a require there is no requirement of having the payload and the uh, uh, data in a contiguous memory you can have the payload uh, header at one location payload at the different location and you can have the sgdma which will take the payload then which will take the header followed by the payload that means you are in case of the simple dma you have to read the header uh, then the data make sure that they are in the contiguous memory before you give the uh, task to the data transfer task to the dma and this is not necessary here which will lead to the more fast uh, packet processing compared to the simple dma so for any dma like in case of the scatter uh, simple dma we had to uh, configure the dma to perform the task so similarly for the scatter gather dma we have to configure the dma to perform the particular task now to configure the dma we need to update the registers inside the dma so let's look at how the registers are there in case of the dma so if you see that the in dma there is a register map and this register map is different for the uh, dma in the scatter gather mode and the dma in the uh, di direct mode so in, we have used the dma in the direct mode and if you can see here the dma in the direct mode you can see that you have the mm2s control register we used to write uh, whenever we do the simple transfer we used to write the run we used to uh, start the dma by writing the one to the run stop beat of the control register then you have the status register by using the polling mode we used to take the status of the register that means we were reading from this register then you can see that we in the simple transfer we used to provide the source address so this uh, the simple transfer uh, function driver function it used to write the that source address inside the dma register then you used to provide the length of the data to be transferred that value is uh, being written inside the dma and the same for the s2 mm uh, one so the in case of the uh, scatter gather mode the same process is there but the dmas are now slightly uh, dma registers are different now if you come back here in case of the scatter gather mode you can see that the uh, the dmas uh, registers uh, are like this so you can see that uh, you have the uh, separate register for the uh, um, you have the separate register for the s2 mm and mm2 s so you can see that these are the set of register for the s2 mm and the mm uh, mm2 s and s2 mm so you can see that you will have control register you have status register and here you are going to give the well uh, current descriptor that from which descriptor you should start processing so the or usually the first descriptor you will write the uh, address of the descriptor here and you will here you will write the last descriptor address you will write it here only when you write the, when you write the value to this one immediately the dma will start uh, working if the run stop bit of the dma in the control register has been set to 1 okay similarly for the s2 mm if you want to know more about this register you should look at this 
document. Now let's look at this control register and status register. Now each register is 32 bit. And you can see that these offsets are important whenever you want to read and write from this uh, control uh, register as well as status register. Now, if you look at the control register, so the first one is the control register. This one is the status register. You can see that the first one is the run and stop bit. You need to set this to one uh, to uh, start processing this one. This is the reserved one. Again, it is set to one. Uh, this is the, if you want to reset the one, you reset the DMA, you need to set it, uh, write the one to this bit. Uh, then uh, these are the additional mode of the DMA, like a keyhole uh, DMA, which is used to, for the uh, reading from the same address instead of giving the set of address. Uh, and then um, it is similar to the fixed mode of the, uh, the fixed incrementing mode in the AXI, which is similar to that one. Uh, if you want to enable the cyclic mode, you can use set this mode to one. Then these are the reserved bits set to zero. <coughs> if you want to enable the interrupt, you can set this uh, bit appropriately one. This is again reserved bit set to zero. And then the corresponding interrupt threshold, you can set to one. Uh, this bit is usually set to one. Then if you want to read the status of the DMA, for example, whether the DMA is halted or running, whether the DMA is ideal, uh, then whether what is the uh, whether the DMA SG mode is supported in the DMA or not, uh, what what kind of error has been happened, whether the internal error, decoding error, slave error, uh, then uh, uh, if there is a uh, corresponding uh, 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 a scatter gathered error, these are the different kind of error. These are the DMA specific error. These are the scatter gathered error. And then the corresponding interrupt has been set or not, those values you can read from the status register. Okay. So from the status register, we'll know what is the current status of the DMA. From the control register, we can control the operation of the DMA. So from the application, we need to make sure that we uh, uh, configure the control register and then we give the address of the buffer descriptor inside the current descriptor and the address of the last descriptor inside the tail descriptor. So these are the process we need to take care. And once we give the uh, task to the DMA, we can check the status register to know whether the task has been completed or not. Okay, so from the application code, we need to write the uh, starting descriptor to the current descriptor register. We need to start the channel by letting the, setting this run stop bit to one. We can enable disable interrupt as per your requirement. Uh, we need to then write the valid address to the tail descriptor. This is the last process should be done because immediately when you write the address of the tail descriptor in the DMA, or whenever you do the write operation inside the tail descriptor pointer field of the DMA register, DMA will start immediately fetching the descriptor. So this uh, writing to the tail descriptor uh, triggers the DMA to start fetching the descriptor from the memory. The phase descriptor are then processed uh, by the, uh, the are read probably by the DMA, send it uh, processed by the DMA so that the data is appropriate data is read, send it to the IP and uh, on the MM to S and S to MM, you read the data from the IP and store back to the DMA. So for you can check the status of the S to MM as well as M to S trans, uh, transfer by using the status register. So this is how you can configure the DMA in case of the uh, uh, in case of the stack rather more now in the next video we will discuss how to create a descriptor inside your application code so that and how to store in the memory and how you can pass the uh, how the dma can read the descriptor and process the corresponding transform